Lady. A point of order, Patricia Gibson. Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to make this point of order, advance of which I have given you. I've had a smear perpetrated against me when a snapshot of frozen film footage was printed about me in a tabloid paper, namely the Scottish Sun, suggesting that I was asleep during proceedings in this House. I contacted the journalist concerned who had not shown the courtesy of contacting me before publishing this piece to inform him that the filming of the proceedings demonstrated categorically that I was not asleep but had for a second or two thrown my head back, appealing to the heavens in despair at chuntering in the chamber whilst one of my colleagues had been speaking. As a result of, of this misleading article, Mr. Speaker, as a result of this misleading article, I face an outpouring of personal abuse against me over the weekend, which continues with words like whore, bitch, lazy cow, being liberally sprinkled through messages, particularly on the Scottish Sun's Facebook page. These, these remarks are still online, and these comments have not been removed, as far as I am aware. Comments on a site in my own constituency, Mr Speaker, this is a matter of great importance. Uh, order. Let me say to the Honourable Lady, I absolutely accept the importance of the matter, and it is for that reason that I am very happy to hear her point of order. But with the very greatest of respect, I will be the judge of how long a point of order lasts. And everything said in this chamber is important. It is not for the late Honourable Lady to presume that she has just as long as she wants. There are a lot of other colleagues wishing to speak, a lot of other matters to be debated. I'm extremely sympathetic to the Honourable Lady, and I already have in mind a very sympathetic response. But please don't say to me it's important, and that means you can go on as long as you like. The answer to that, I'm afraid, is no. Patricia Gibson. The point I wish to make, Mr Speaker, is that these... This story was printed, if you can call it that, in an atmosphere of febrile political tension yes. when MP security get is a in, matter of in. great concern. And these, this story has been reposted and the comments online continue to sit. Mr Speaker, this is a matter of importance to all of us as an attack on one MP going about her duties and a false attack at that is an attack on all of us. Whipping up hatred against any one of us plays into the narrative that we are not real people and can be attacked. I'm sorry, I must ask the Honourable Lady, upon what is she seeking an adjudication from the Chair? I cannot just have a speech on the subject, and, and I will not have it. If the Honourable Lady wants to ask me something in a sentence, I will respond. But I'm not having a speech. If she wants an adjournment debate on the subject, I can happily afford her that. But I'm not having a speech now. It's not happening. Please. Mr. Speaker, given that these posts continue to be available on this publication's social media platforms and continue to perpetrate this untruth, I ask you, given that the evidence shows otherwise, what course of action you suggest when I might seek an end to this apparent campaign to perpetrate a dishonesty and stop this tidal wave of abuse which has been unleashed, here, here, which is an attack on all of us? The Honourable Lady, the Honourable Lady in answer. First of all, let me thank her for raising the matter and giving me advance notice of her intention to do so. And secondly, I underline and reinforce her concern that it is indeed an extremely serious matter, not just for her personally, but for all colleagues and institutionally for the House of Commons. False allegations against members should not be allowed to gain traction. It affects all of us and the reputation of the House if such allegations are not robustly refuted. To be fair, she has just robustly refuted the allegation. The concern that she has would be serious at any time, but it is a particular concern in what I think she described as the current febrile political atmosphere. She has put her view on the matter very clearly on the record. And what I would say to her is this. If the Honourable Member considers that the allegations made against her might conceivably constitute a contempt of the House, she should write to me setting out the facts and I will adjudicate upon that. That's the first answer. The second answer to the Honourable Lady is that if she wishes to stage an adjournment debate 
on this abuse, of which this is an example, but of which there are many other examples, she might find a friendly chair will facilitate an adjournment debate for her, possibly of up to an hour and a half, in which other colleagues could also take part, and in which she would indeed have a full opportunity to make such speech as she judged necessary. Uh, thirdly, I would say to the Honourable Lady, my advice to her in the short term is to get her hands on a copy of the official report of today's proceedings, without delay, as I'm sure she will do, and to ensure that it is circulated to all the outlets responsible for propagating this slur upon her good name. And fourthly, I want to say to the Honourable Lady, in terms which leave no scope for misunderstanding, that I have got a good vantage point in the chair. I say that to all members and to those observing our proceedings. I have never in my time in the chair, observing the Honourable Lady, seen her fall asleep. She is a veritable parliamentary Zebedee. <laughs> she is constantly jumping up and down, and that, as she knows, is a compliment, not an insult. She is one of the most alert members of Parliament. She is one of the most assiduous chamber attendees and participants. She is without blemish so far as her parliamentary commitment is concerned and I'll let her into a secret I was once not in this chamber I was once watching a tennis match at Wimbledon one of the most exciting matches I've ever watched momentarily I closed my eyes not because I'd fallen asleep or because I'd drunk alcohol because neither of those things was true I had momentarily closed my eyes in sheer suspense in sheer suspense and the camera caught me, and the next day it was suggested in a newspaper that perhaps I'd fallen asleep. The notion, as the Honourable Lady knows, that I would fall asleep yeah. watching a tennis match is just uh, inherently absurd. So I don't treat it with levity, it's extremely serious. But as far as I'm concerned, it is monstrous and ridiculous. And she should circulate the official report which testifies to the Chair's view of this matter. And I've got a better idea than those other commentators for the very simple reason that I observe members every day from the Chair. And she wouldn't fall asleep. Amen. End of subject. Period.